Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Well, the uh, convertible has beaten me for the time being. I thought I was gonna MOT it this week, but uh, no, the electrical fault on the fuel pump is unbeatable for a man of my modest intellect when it comes to fixing car electrics. So it's, even though it is massively in the way where it is right now because its front wheel has fallen off this little bit of kerb so I can tow it over that but I can't push it over that so it's kind of stuck there until the engine runs so tomorrow an auto electrician is going to come and look at this car and try and find what fault is hidden in either a relay or a joint somewhere I don't know hopefully he can figure it out in a matter of minutes and have the thing running beautifully one I guess lucky thing we've had this week with the rover being stuck out here in the middle of the drive is that the neighbour next door has moved out. The new neighbour hasn't moved in for two days, so I've got a handy parking bay for the uh, Volvo for just two days. <laughs> it keeps it close at hand, easy to use. Now, let's wander into the garage where we find what has become a workbench. The problem is I leave a car like this one for more than a day and suddenly it becomes a receptacle of junk. So first thing we've got is the hood, which should have been fitted to the convertible already, but it couldn't go for an MOT because it wouldn't start. So that's on top of that, all the contents of the Alpha's boot. And then this is a rather exciting thing. If you're a Patreon or a member, you will know all about this already. I can't, I'm actually losing track of what videos I've done lately. It's been a funny couple of weeks. Um, this is very exciting. I just had to pause and have a bit of a tidy up and get a tripod because there's just too much clutter in here to talk about what I was going to talk about. Now, if you are a channel member or a Patreon of the channel, which is a fantastic thing, and thank you if you are, because it does make a massive difference to doing this kind of stuff. You will have seen these already when I did the monthly Patreon and members chat at the end of October, which will be viewable to everybody else in about a week's time, end of November. So, you know, the cycle continues. Right, the other day, I had a bit of a lucky find because I had been talking to uh, Valley Gas Speed Shop down in Andover about making an exhaust pipe for this thing because I had got some headers that I got from someone a little while ago I was going to use. They are kind of homemade, they were going to work, but well, it was going to be a tight fit. They weren't that pretty, but they would have worked, but I still needed a proper exhaust, so I didn't want to be you know, in and out of the exhaust a lot. That's just a lot of trouble. Um, and they said, well, maybe the best thing to do is buy some headers off the shelf if you can and that'll be an awful lot cheaper and then we'll make a custom exhaust from that point back because then I'll have a, the proper exhaust working and it's quite a restrictive head on these anyway so the headers are kind of not the least important part but mm, the area where the least gains can be made put it that way um, but anyway I couldn't find one I wasn't aware of anyone who made 4.6 litre headers that will fit into a p6 chassis because that is incredibly tight down there so i put a question on the owners club forum on uh, on facebook which is like a, you know, nothing to lose i said anyone know we can get some of these made up and uh, astonishingly that very moment someone must have been looking at the exactly the right time because he said yeah I, i've got a set of custom ones made up by uh, toyo sports a few years ago bought them for my 4.6 into a p6 project but then i changed direction uh, they've been sat on the shelf forever never used them uh, the, the laptop hadn't finished bouncing on the carpet before I was in the car driving down to collect them. So these are absolutely fantastic stainless steel tubular manifolds, headers if you're in America, that will sit down there, hug the block, block huggers I believe they're called, um, making this a beautiful, neat looking install. Now, what he has done, him being a better welder than what I am, he has polished one of them up already so it looks absolutely glorious that is polished stainless steel so that looks just the best he's also cut out that middle bit of webbing as well um, just to make it a little bit neater i'm not sure i'm going to do that because uh, i'm not sure i've got a saw that'll do that neatly enough it might just make a bit of a mess if i did the other thing he's done is he's taken these he's taken these seams off these kind of welding seams which aren't that unattractive but it does look better without them however he did say it's a little bit thin in places and he did go through and have to to kind of plug it and repair it so I might just polish so I will just polish this one to match this one but I'm not going to try and grind the seams off because there be dragons now that is a beautiful bit of metal that looked delightful that's gonna look so good down there on the side of the car I'm really looking forward to getting them fitted um, the other thing which I was astonished when he said 
just got back and forth on Facebook Messenger. You want the manifolds, do you want the Y pipe, which is the, the double down pipe for a V8? So how much? And he said a price, which I couldn't really say no to. And so I've got this, which is also stainless steel. Uh, so I need to go and give this a jolly good polish. Uh, there was a bit he'd started. He'd started polishing just there. And that's how the whole thing will come up when it's done, which means I've got to go and find me some kind of polishing attachment to go in my drill and get all this looking delightful. Um, Cause I don't feel like doing this by hand. <laughs> so yes, I am what is known as one happy bunny because that is going to make a big difference. This was, whole exhaust situation was a bit of a stumbling block to completing the project. And partly why I'd kind of ignored it because I knew that getting an, an exhaust pipe made up is it runs into the thousands. And so I was just kind of ignoring that problem but everything's just kind of stopped and on hold until that finally happened. Now, before I fit any of these things, I need to go back and finish sorting out the, the fine tuning of the, the gearbox, the gear linkages, and then fit the exhaust manifolds. Then I can then do all the other bits and pieces, the hoses, the bracketry on the front, so I can put the power steering, the alternator, that kind of stuff on there. It's all just buttoning up messy, irritating stuff, really. So I suppose I better crack on. So as usual, it is dark and it is raining and it is cold. It's actually a lot harder to work under here when it's in the garage than when it's outside because uh, you can't get underneath from the side very easily. And the things hit you in the face, they're much harder. You might remember last time I was underneath this car, I was trying to connect up all these selector rods and things, um, and one of them I was adjusting shorter and shorter to make it the right length, and it kind of seized up, and I couldn't get my hand in there, I needed to get some more grips in there, so I was, that's why I'm dropping the gearbox down again at the tail shaft, so that I can get in here and adjust whichever one it was, I can't remember what it was to be honest, because it's been a few weeks, I got distracted, so I don't think I'll film all this because it's particularly tedious. Already I'm two bolts in, I'm going to go get a cup of tea because this is no fun sticking my hands up in it. It'd be much easier with a lift. All right, this is the one I needed to find. This is the one that goes on the bottom of the selector. That's the bottom of the gear shift that's pushed into park right now. And that needs to come back just a couple of turns. But I needed to hold that rod with, oops, I've lost it one thing, some mole grips so that I could clamp it tight and turn, I don't know if you can see that, that little nut just behind the plastic part, just so I could slack it off and turn it back a wee bit more. And I couldn't do that without dropping the gearbox down. So now I'm gonna need two hands for this, so I'll say goodbye again for a second. It's in, hurrah, now I've just got the minor problem that I don't know what's happened to the nut and washer that was on the end of it. Um, that is potentially a problem. In fact, I'll probably just put one more wind on that really, because that could do with coming around a tad more. I left him on the dashboard, how's that for organisation? Right, let's have a quick check now. It's all bolted underneath. Fantastic, well that seems to work. Let me put it back on the ground and see if the car can actually roll now. Because last time it couldn't. Now the big question is, with it back on the ground, with it in neutral and the handbrake off, can I move it backwards? It's currently sticking outside the garage door. Yes! Yes I can! So I've now got accurate working gear selectors. It's in neutral, in the right position, on the console, on the gear shifter. Which means, one step closer. Well that actually went quite well really, so I'm relieved. I think I'll go with relieved rather than anything else. And next up, got this plastic bottle which I'm going to be cutting up shortly because now I need to be starting assembling all the bracketry that goes around the front of the engine and also putting those um, pipes on the back and assembling the fuel line. Quick question, if anyone knows what the name of these fittings are called, let me know because I need to go and buy some and I don't know what they're called so I can't. So if anyone can tell me the name of these old Imperial fuel couplings, what size they are, I'd be very grateful. Now, before I put these bits of engine back on, these ones, particularly the stuff around the power steering pumps, which are gross, they need a jolly good cleanup. So I'm going to soak them in gunk 
for a while so that I can come back to them, paint them nicely. The whole front end of the car looking quite nice. So that needs cleaning up. Yuck. That plastic bottle I found isn't going to be big enough, so that needs cleaning. Uh, that should be somewhere else. Um, and that needs cleaning. I have been really kind of worrying or wondering where all these went because um, it's been so long since I took them off, I couldn't exactly remember how they will go together and it doesn't really show you in the book but luckily I was out the other day and I saw a P6 with the bonnet up and I stopped and asked if I could uh, take some photos under the bonnet so I've got some clues now right let's go and find something to soak these in right, right as you can see it's the day again it's morning time and I've nearly finished under the car I technically have finished but I wasn't completely happy with the job because one thing I had noticed was that the three bolts that hold that gearbox bracket are all kind of mismatched old there's one that's as it should be the rest are all too long random size nuts and bolts so I've been down to MBE fastenings and bought some nice all the same half inch UN, UNF or UNFC I can't remember uh, old Imperial type half inch headed bolts and nuts to finish the job and make it attractive and nice so obviously we've got jack stands and a jack here underneath the car for safety as always this thing is a heavy old beast now a little while ago someone did comment that you should not have the jack under the car if you've got the jack stands under it as well uh, which is a fairly you know, good comment to make however with the p6 it's really hard to find places that you're really happy to put axle stand under and support it there's very few places to actually jack one so with these cars i prefer to leave the jack underneath it as well because i never really trust anything i'm putting anything under on one of these cars they're not the most relaxing cars to be underneath right let's crack on This last one, I quickly whacked in Evan last night just to you know, hold the thing up steady. And so I didn't even put washers on it because I couldn't find any. You know, I didn't think that was going to fall that much. I have to admit, I really didn't expect that last uh, bolt to be holding it quite as high and firmly as it was. Didn't expect I had to jack it up again. <laughs> okay, let's go and get a nice shiny new butt nut to go with that. Uh, it's easier to do this from the other side, that's for sure. I actually put one elbows back in. I don't think I was paying attention when I was uh, after I jacked the car up. Never mind, it can stay there now. It's got a new nut on the end so it looks quite nice and clean and shiny. I am glad I came and looked under here though because I just noticed I hadn't finished screwing this one up because I was obviously taking the car up and down a few times. I just need to finish tightening that up. How's that for half inch? I had thought these were half inch as well but they're 9 sixteenths. So there's two sizes of socket or spanner I need to take with me on a road trip in this car. Oh, that finally is done. I think the prop shaft must be at a slightly funny angle because I couldn't get a good grip on it with any spanner or socket or literally anything. And it just took forever and ever and ever. But it's done now. And one other thing before I finally put this thing back down its wheels for the time being. I've been saying every time I go in the engine bay, oh, I must go and sort out the fuel lines because there's old rubber lines. They will perish with new uh, ethanol petrol in no time at all. I just glanced back over my head just thinking, oh, wonder if there's any loose bolts on the other end of the prop shaft as well I noticed the uh, fuel line isn't generally that furry as a rule so uh, that does need to be done also I'm just noticing more and more bits I need to re-undercoat and this car has had both its sills welded in the past uh, and it was undercoated about 10 years ago and that's all clearly flaking off again now so I need to get busy with the undercoat as soon as I get the car outside right let's put this thing back on its wheels and do stuff in the engine bay. 
Right, well, I was about to go and install my shiny new manifolds because I've been fully prepared and waiting for this moment for a, well, longer than I've had them. To the end, I've had this lovely new set of ARP, are these stainless? Yeah, they are stainless header bolts or manifold bolts waiting in their lovely uh, packet for about a year now. And I'd also ordered a nice set of manifold gaskets as well. And believe it or not, somewhere in this perfectly organized, not in any way chaotic and disheveled mess, there's a new, in the well, cling wrap, whatever you want to call it, packaging set of manifold gaskets and I can't install them without that because obviously that would be a bad thing. So I'm going to take step number two which is to have a cup of tea. Incidentally these are mugs, these Rover mugs are fantastic if you've got a Rover, if you like a Rover, have a Rover friend in your family or circle of friends then what better Christmas present than a Rover mug or t-shirt? There's a link in the description below. I know some of you hate these kind of merch plugs but this is how we make our living after all. Um, Tea tastes better from your Fierce Driving or Rover mug. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Tealicious. <laughs> um, sorry. Right. Um, so what I'll do, I'll get on with polishing. This, uh, yeah, I haven't actually hoovered the uh, workbench since I drew it out with the hockey packs the other day. This one, I'll take this off the, uh, take it off the tripod in a second so you can see this. This one looks astonishingly nice. This one, I'm now going to get a bit of chrome and metal polish, my DA sander, oh, it's not quite square, um, so I can uh, have a go with that, try and make that look a bit more prettier. So when it does go on, when I, in the morning, I can find that hopefully, and I can uh, have it looking beautiful. Right, I'll, I'll just do a quick close up of these. So this is the one that has already been polished, and boy does it look nice. I don't know if you can see this or not through here, but it's also been kind of worked over on the inside to give a lovely smooth finish. So nice, easy, and easy smooth gas flow inside there as well. This is the one that hasn't been prepared yet, which is still not a bad um, finish. I mean, if you saw this for the first time, you'd be quite happy to put it on a car and be pretty impressed with it. It's only because I've got this one next to it, which just looks so awesome that I'm going to have to make an effort with this one. This one hasn't been worked over. It's not quite as smooth, but to be fair, there's not a lot in it. That's not a bad straight out the box finish. Now at the beginning of the video, I did say that Patreons and channel members, there are links down below if you would like to become a Patreon or a channel member and help support the ongoing chaos that is furious driving. Um, I was gonna say, yes, they heard about this when I did the end of the last month video chat, which you'll be able to see, I think at the end of this week, I'll, I'll reveal that one. So you probably will have seen a few things that are going on with uh, the last month will have been previewed a month ago, if that makes sense, it probably doesn't. So in, in a few days time, the end of this coming week, because I'm gonna put this video out on Sunday, it's Saturday right now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be recording the November members and Patreons chat. So who knows what secrets will be revealed for the coming month. If you'd like to get a preview of that, then you know, hit up the membership buttons down below and find out what's going on. I'm not sure it's gonna be a lot this month. <laughs> I think last month might be more exciting than this month. Um, but yeah, if you are a member or not a member or a Patreon, regardless, drop any questions in the emails and usual contact ways down below and I'll answer those questions if you have any. If no one's got any questions, I'll just ramble on for a half an hour. Um, oh yeah, also, if you've got anything you'd like to post, send me a postcard, send me a Christmas card, send me anything else like that at all. There's an address down below, PO box, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's all in the link below. Send me junk, send me a postcard. So me any crud you don't want in your garage anymore. And uh, yeah, I will discuss it at length. This is uh, Dumb and Bright Chrome and Metal Polish. I've never used this before. Mm, all right, let's see how this goes. Am I going to about to wear this is the question. So what I'll do, before I do that, I will wrap up my nice shiny one and get it out of harm's way. You can go in the boot of sleaze for a few minutes. I think I said the other day, I don't generally name my cars, but because this car's number plate is SLE, and then that seven looks a bit like a Z, I'll call this car Sleaze. It amuses me. Ooh, good car. Now, how does that look? I need a microfiber.
not bad actually. A bit of a, a bit of a shine to it. I'm going to work this over a bit more and we'll see how we go from there. Oh, look at that. That side's done, or done-ish. This side isn't done yet. That is so sparkly, I love it. That is brilliant, proper bit of bling. I know it's not the 90s anymore, so we don't put all our uh, bullet aluminium over everything in the engine bay these days. But this looks nice. Bring back billet. <laughs> so uh, incidentally, while we are stood out here in the dark, it's half past eight at night and freezing cold and pitch dark, absolutely Black as night out there, because well, it is night. Um, what do you think of my new light up here on the, under the bench? That's how I put it up today. Got it from uh, Screwfix, because um, I figured it's always a bit dark and gloomy in this corner of the garage where the workbench is. So I figured I'd do myself a little treat, 20 quid on one of them, and see what I'm doing. I've got the, not the video light up there, but it's kind of in the way a bit, really. I'm going to move the alpha light along the wall a bit, because it's a bit vulnerable where it is at the moment. Right by the vice, where things get hit with hammers. Hmm. Now I've just just been out and found this Y pipe from other end of the car because I can see if I can do anything with this because this manifold has come up really quite nicely. I'll put this out of harm's way over there. I'll see if I can bring up a decent shine on this thing. I wonder if this has been used in the past or not. Hmm, reminds me a bit more aggressive like Brasso perhaps. I'll rotate this without damaging the black car. This garage is too tight. There we go. Because I can't get out now. not really working out but that is going to look so good we're so close oh not some, have I got not some bolts for doing this I mean for connecting that bit that's a good question I should better find that out that is going to be perfect hmm yeah better figure that one out so after last night's polishing efforts, I discovered I wouldn't be fitting these manifolds for two reasons. First of all, can't find the gaskets. No idea what I've done with them. I've gone through everything. I've been through the car, been through the boot, been through all the boxes. I'm going to have to buy some more, which is really annoying. Uh, secondly, I realised I didn't know what size threaded holes these are. They're almost the kind of half inch UNC, UNF, whatever it is, but only go in like two winds. So I don't think it is that. So I need to go and take these down to a tool bolt fixing shop who will be able to identify that thread for me and sell me some bolts then I can fit it because I don't want to be buying a million bolts just to see which one's which so that can stay not on there I'll leave it in there to keep it safe now secondly and secondly no amount of polishing with just regular polishes would do anything to that Y pipe in the end I went down to G7 cutting compound some other pasty compound stuff I had in the garage of when I used to do cellulose painting got a bit of a shine to it but couldn't get to the high chrome. I was talking to the rubbish mechanic James who owns the Alpha 90 and he recommended a really volatile dangerous mix of stuff <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go and get some of that which he reckoned would, would get it looking shiny so that isn't a priority. So I'm gonna move on to trying to get these things looking nice. Oops, coffee first. Ah, pissed over. Right, um, yeah, this stuff, this horrible goo here, it looks like con congealed jelly, is off the old power steering pipes. It was disgusting. And I was about to go and cut down 
this old tub and try and wash it in there. Then I realised our local council has been really kind and given us these uh, parts washing bins for free. So that's perfect. Thanks local council. Pop an old eggshell or two that are in there. Just trying to splash in my coffee because that would taste disgusting. I want some more of this actually, it's only about half a canful there. Ah, another handy oil change receptacle there. To start with an easy one. Push an exhaust bracket relevantly. Ugh, I'll do that one last, it's gross. This I think is the alternator bracket. And I'll chuck this in in a minute. Oh, my standing knife. I wonder where that's gone. I can lose that there for now. I can wonder where that's gone later. Now, annoyingly, all of my paintbrushes seem to look like this, which is suboptimal, my word of the week. Handy for scratching thick oil off, but not actually good for getting into crevices. I've got a lovely um, alloy wheel cleaner, which is really good, but it's kind of too nice for this. Uh, I'm, I'm being cooled again. Much nicer. I don't put in horrible caked in decades old grease and oil components back on a fresh new engine. That would be disgusting. Question is, these things which were just cast aluminium originally, do I now paint them up with like VHT or something to make them look pretty? Or do I leave them bare metal as they were originally? They would look quite nice in black to be honest. Well, that is interesting. Engine degreaser will save an old brush. I mean, it's not good for anything else again, but at least I've got bristles some more. So this, the power steering pump, is by far the worst offender for being gross and disgusting. This, apparently this gooey stuff is quite nasty if you get it on your skin. It's um, the old insulation off the power steering pipes. I've actually got brand new ones, which came from MG, I always get his name wrong, MGBD, Mark Gray had some remade a while ago and I bought a set in preparation. So I've been mean, buying bits for this project for absolutely years. And they're still in the footwell of the car. I can find them, don't need them yet, can't find the uh, manifold caskets, which could be literally anywhere. I'll go over to the um, lockup with the 2000 later on today, just in case they've managed to find their way over there somehow. I very much doubt it, but you know, there's no point buying the things twice. Because I know that the moment I get a new pack and unwrap them, the old set will turn up. This is properly, properly caked on half a century of crud. Yeah, I think this actually was black to start with, but it's uh, all flaked off. So we'll VHT this one. Looking at how thick this oil that's caked on is here, you can tell the old engine, the old three and a half litre, wasn't healthy. Right, so I've got the, the worst of the horrible goo off this bracket and uh, gives one of those lava brush things, that you, not lava wheels, that you put in the drill to get the worst of the loose paint off as well. This is going to be pretty much buried, so you won't see it in the engine bay. Just nice to know it's half decent for a paint it. The dogs were very excited when they saw me getting old socks out of the, uh, the rag bag this morning because they thought there was some new game happening for them. They were very disappointed when I walked off without them. Ah, the old, good old all-purpose brake clutch and literally everything else in the world cleaner. Is there nothing it can't improve? I've decided I'm going black with these. That one definitely because it was black to start with. But I'll go black with the alternating thing as well because it's not particularly beautiful condition aluminium. I could try and polish it I suppose, but it would look quite nice in black really. And the uh, slightly rusty red, um, exhaust pipe bracket would definitely be improved. There are many, many crevices on this. Ah. Well, I've got a good finish on me. Well, they don't look too bad. I'll give them a couple more coats after they've dried, but that'll be off camera later on this afternoon of C-Class Black. Why is it C-Class Black? Because this car is very high temperature. Well, okay, that didn't go completely as planned, but that's the norm for this channel, isn't it? We start doing one thing, other stuff happens, 
this is what happens when you're doing cars in real time. It's not like TV shows where it's all scripted and planned and they can put it together afterwards when they've done things cleverly and hidden the mishaps. It's not really surprising stuff's gone missing in this mess, is it? But hey, that's, that's furious driving for you. Well, that's enough shenanigans for this video. I'm going to go and edit this now and put it out in time for lunchtime. Um, right, so as I was saying earlier, if you've got anything to post off to the P.O. Box address so I can unveil it and have a laugh and show it with the world, post it quickly this week. Email me some questions, any other comments, let me know. Talk to me in the comments. As always, uh, I'll try and do some comment answering because I haven't answered any comments about two or three days now. I'm not ignoring you. Just don't have time because of this. Right, I'm going to go do other stuff now. Take care, everybody. Like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada stuff. YouTube. See you next time. Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk.